someone who likes the smell of dead people. It's not pleasant, as I've seen in movies. I kind of think it's creepy, a little bit. They walk around in black all the time, you know? Walk around. They like dressing up dead people. Yeah, on the ground and stuff in their, their funeral homes. You don't understand me But if the feeling was right An underlying fascination with the, the dead body, um, wanting to see different causes of death, traumatic accidents, homicides, suicides. One of the biggest misconceptions is certainly the, the idea that there's a morbid fascination with the funeral director. The whole idea that they got into the business because of a fascination with death, uh, a, a need to understand something deeper. We're human just like you. We like to go out and have a good time. We like to have a beer like to watch a hockey game. You know, we're not consumed by death. Uh, we're, we're very different in that we're, we're constantly on call. We always work, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a holiday, it doesn't matter if it's your birthday, somebody passes away, this job is all consuming, but we're here for the families. And it's not a, it's not a morbid fascination. It's not something that I do because I enjoy being around dead bodies or enjoy embalming or, or anything like that. People are, are naturally curious about death. There's a lot of times that they don't understand the embalming procedure, they don't understand um, what happens with the body through natural decomposition after death. My biggest step into the business was uh, my, my make or break weekend, I call it. And Friday, I'll never forget, Friday was a, a 21 year old car accident that, uh, extremely tragic, no one expected, obviously. Um, you, you really can't when it comes to something like that. And then two days later, we had a, a two-year-old who drowned in a pool. And we finished both funerals. Um, Monday was the first, and then Wednesday was the second, and then my application for school was in on Thursday. It's tragic death. Anytime you see somebody that's younger than you or your age or, or someone that you just can't make sense out of why they're gone, you know, even suicides. When you see a, a person that was out and doing well with their friends and interacting and having a good time and, and living life and then all of a sudden decides to take their own life and to just make that, that ultimate decision that impacts so many of the family members and, and friends and there's so much uncertainty. There's so many answers that aren't, quite, aren't or questions that aren't answered rather. And uh, you can never explain it. It never gets easier. Um, infants, children, there's nothing easy about that. You come in, you do your job and and you leave it behind you best you can. You know what? It's natural to grieve. It's natural to be curious about death. It's natural to, to be curious about what happens once mom passes away at a hospital and the next time you see her, she's laying out in a casket looking completely different than she did when she was dead. Helping these families through an extremely difficult time in their life makes you wake up in the morning and feel good about what you're doing. It was peaceful. Um, There's definitely some sadness, but it's not all about being sad. It's like a service actually for the living as opposed to for the deceased they're working on. They're probably good with dealing with people and helping them through their problems. Taking time out of their schedules to uh, celebrate the life of uh, whoever has passed. I'd like to say there's a heaven, there's a hell, there's a, a final judgment, but I don't know. You know, nobody really does. And it's difficult because there's times when you see tragic death and you see young death and, and you doubt your faith. And you say, how, how can there be something greater and something bigger after this if, if God or Allah or whoever you, you believe in is going to take this young person from us or is going to have this terrible tragedy, a, a 3407 flight going down or a 21-year-old a crashing on the side of the road for no reason, um, you know, a, a teenager taking their own life, an infant dying. You doubt. You doubt faith. You doubt God. You doubt any kind of afterlife. But... You have to dig down deep inside and think, you know what, there's got to be something better. There has to be something after this.
Do I believe in a heaven? Certainly. Do I think I'll get there? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'm breaking down